welcome to the Activity Call Live. And now, our host, Andy Albright. Woohoo! Let's go! Um, all right, guys, I, I, I got a topic here that I really, I do a lot when I'm traveling around the when I'm traveling around the country, and I've got um, three dudes on here, three guys on here that are really, really active recruiting, and they're actually really successful at recruiting. But I want to, I want to talk to them because even I want them to get a little bit better, and um, I want them to think about what I'm talking about, and then um, think of examples. Talk about what's happened to you recently. Um, also, President's Club is having tremendous success with these new Zip Recruiter ads. I know a lot of people are having success with Indeed. Um, I'm having success, uh, and, and well, I know a lot of other people too are, with just meeting people or, or just tossing the opportunity out to folks and having a lot of great success. Um, we've got two, two sharp guys in here today and a young lady that we're interviewing and that went through this process and I'm going to talk about and it'll be interesting if they if they if they pick up on what what was happening when we brought them in but we're going to teach how to do that so first of all um, my name is Andy Albright I'm here at the the headquarters in Burlington North Carolina this office is so crazy I always enjoy coming in we've got great staff here great people I would encourage you across the country, if you ever get a chance to come to the home office and meet uh, the marketing group, the recruiters, the pending folks, the, the lead distribution, President's Club, the event planning, uh, everybody's here that run the company. I encourage you to come in. And so um, I'm happy to be here. Then we've got a leadership today out at my cabin, which I would encourage you if you ever get a shot to go out at that cabin and our leadership. It's got great. If you like fishing, You'd think you in heaven out there, and if you like shooting stuff, you'd definitely be just love it. Just nature in general. We're having a, we've got a llamas and goats and chickens, and um, we're getting some, um, um, what do you call them? Um, no iguanas yet, but if we could get some um, miniature donkeys. That's what we're getting. We're getting miniature donkeys. <laughs> I'm excited about that. They're really cute. Cute. Um, and uh, we may be getting a mama that's pregnant and going to have another baby. I'm not sure what what my um, what my acquisition guy for donkeys is going to acquisition, but um, that's a different acquisition mode than bringing on good people to your team. But if you get a chance, that leadership cabin's cool. I'm headed out there shortly, and um, then back to Florida. So anyway, um, let's see, Tim Long, tell them a little bit about you and your military background and um, job background and um, family. Good morning, Andy. Thanks for having me on. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, I've been here with the Alliance for five years. My wife, Nikki, and I were in Savannah, Georgia, and we spent 22 years. Uh, I was in the military as a pilot and retired about nine years ago, became an entrepreneur then, and wasn't uh, wasn't fulfilling, uh, I guess, the need to help families as well as I had hoped. And so about five years ago, Jake and Bell Krauss, longtime friends of ours, uh, we chatted was not interested in sales, was not interested in insurance. And five years later, here I am loving it, wouldn't want to do anything else. So fired up. We are, uh, like I said, here in Savannah, we've got four kids. One is, is out of the house and married, and we've got uh, 13 year old twins and a 10 year old uh, son as well. And they're all entrepreneurs as well. So we're, we're fired up, having a great time. Yeah, Tim's, Tim's got a great organization going. He's got people selling. Him and Nikki are selling and um, doing great. And I want y'all to know that he is, um, he's very modest in his military background. He is definitely a um, American hero. One of the reasons we live in a free country is he's out there on, been out on the front lines and I'm um, just proud of appreciate your service and um, appreciate you being here. Uh, you're, hey, the other reason I, I got these three is you're looking for these three people. These are, these three people are who you're looking for. We got them. And so that's the other reason I, I wanted them to be on. So um, Mike Marisi, same, same. Your morning, morning. Education background, job background, and about your family. 
Absolutely. Good morning, guys. Mike Maurice out of Chicago. Um, so I live uh, downtown in the city uh, with my wife, Kate, and then my uh, two-year-old, Mike Jr., which we call MJ. And um, yeah, Kate and I, we actually got into the business. Um, it's been, it'll be about five years this coming October. I used to do um, pharmaceutical sales. Um, I was traveling all over the country, just building a business for someone else. And I looked at the next level up where I was going to be at, you know, down the road with that company. And that guy was absolutely miserable. So I got got out of that corporate grind. I got introduced to this business uh, from my aunt, uh, Diane Lampy, who's actually in Dallas. Uh, she showed me what, what she was doing, the fun she was having, the people she was working with. I got my license part-time and I just worked in the moonlight on the weekends and i started making more money on the weekend than i did during the week and i made that transition out so i'm starting to help more more people do that same type of transition get out of that grind and just build a better life so excited to be here glad to have you on team where'd you go to college i went to loyola loyola chicago um right up here in my hometown and uh Played volleyball. We were D1, so traveled all over for that. And then I uh, played a little bit overseas for a little while in Austria, too. So I had mean, some fun doing start. that. Somebody yeah. gave you American money to play volleyball. <laughs> well, I actually got paid in euros because I was living in Austria. Okay. Well, that's, I was glad you clarify that. So you got paid in euros <laughs> to play volleyball. Yeah. Not yeah. a lot, but it was it was an experience. Got to travel around Austria. Um play a sport that I love and drink beer. So it was a lot of fun. What do y'all think about that? Man got paid in euros to play volleyball. That's good stuff right there. <laughs> All right. Glad you're on the team. You and Kate are who we're looking for. Um, Mr. Odsoy. Morning, Andy. Thank you for having me on. Good morning, y'all. Uh, my name is Marvin Odsoy. I was hired by my one of my best friends, Marvin Osuna. I san, signed up for the Alliance back in 2014, but basically doing nothing until my mindset was ready in 2019 at the end. Uh, my wife, Yulisa, is in the business with me. My boys, Andres, JC, and Gabriel, now we're running this business. I came to America with, uh, you know, uh, looking for my American dream. My respect to the military people background. Thank you, Tim. My respect for you. I'm enjoying the freedom of this country and also living my American dream with the Alliance. Thank you very much for that. And, you know, I'm here working in America as a forklift operator when I came here. And now being with the Alliance, traveling with all of you guys has been something amazing for me. Reno is my home hotspot. Looking forward to meet Andy one more time here in Reno with other true warriors in the Alliance. So looking for that and also meet you all in Miami. Miami, baby. Yep. <laughs> what country did you come here from, Atsoy? Guatemala. Guatemala is just country next to Mexico. It's a small country. I came here and yeah, I forgot to mention that I was running a political campaign back in 2017, 18 got me you know financial trouble here in you know in the family in the business so because of that i just look into the alliance opportunity and as i said sign up in the alliance 2014 basically you know doing nothing but i i found my why here in the alliance and i'm here and i'm here with you guys so um did you go to um university in guatemala Absolutely. Yes, uh, I attended two universities in Guatemala. Uh, I graduated as an economist, got my master's degree in other studies for banking. So my background in Guatemala was working at a central bank in Guatemala. And, you know, coming here and studying, as I said, with the forklift operator, but just looking for something else, just looking for an opportunity to live here in America and apply, you know, every aspect of the knowledge that I'm just getting from all of you. Good stuff. So you, you, when your political campaign was in Guatemala, that was not in America, correct? That is correct. It was in Guatemala, trying okay. to be a hero. <laughs> all right. 
You with me? So we have a war hero. He says, I flew planes or something like that. So let's be clear. This guy can fly anything. Yeah. Jets, helicopters, Chinooks. What's the, is it, what's the big one? It's like a bigger than a, is that a Chinook? Yes. Am I saying it right? Yeah. Yep. That's what Jake and I and Brandon Bulis, we all flew. What do you, what do you call them guns that, they, that you have to put on ceramic and stuff to shoot out the, win, out the window? What do you call them? Yeah, we had mini guns. One that's got a circle and it shoots like semi. How many second bullets come out of that? 3,000 rounds a minute. 3,000 rounds a minute. I have never shot one of those. Because <laughs> <laughs> nobody non military gets to shoot them. <laughs> This looks like this looks like a ball of fire is coming out of it. I was like, you would not want to be on the other end of that, and him hovering over top of you look like a big double wide trailer flying through the air. I mean, fireballs coming out of it, and um, and I, I, I tell you what, I ain't never done has been shot back at. But um, and you got a guy that got paid in euros to play volleyball in other countries and drank beer. And drank beer. He left out a lot of stuff. <laughs> he got to do playing volleyball. <laughs> Went to Loyola University, graduated, married Kate, bad to the bone. Where'd Kate go to school? She went to Taylor University in uh, Indy, Indianapolis. And I, I'm not saying you don't have um, education, like formal, Tim, but what an education to learn how to do what all he's learned how to do and what you got to pass and have the mindset to get through it, the discipline to get through it. Um, any, any university degrees on top of your, all your other education, Tim? Yeah, I've got a bachelor's from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Okay. And then Otsoy, from a different country, politician, master's degree, and self-employed here with a PNC agency, gets involved with us, and says, this is a way to make money really, really fast. This is not get rich quick, but it is get rich fast. You with me? So um, I ain't told this in a long time, but when I first got my insurance license, I met a guy that had a house in Chitola, which is a resort up here, had a nice house and country club and a house at um, Emerald Isle. And he's in insurance. And he said, you just, it'll work. You can get rich. It's going to take you a while. And I was like, mm -mm, I'm going to do it in a hurry. I'm going to do it fast. His name's Don Allred. He's got a nice office over there and had two Mercedes sitting out front and two secretaries. And I said, you got three homes. I'm going to get me an insurance license. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, my undergraduate's engineering NC State um, and was 98% through getting my master's degree. And I got involved in self-employment and said, forget that. My wife was 90% done. She thought I was crazy. She went ahead and got her master's degree. So she's a lot smarter than me. Um, she went on to work, I don't know, three more years at the, at, she's in education. And before she, before she, um, she didn't retire. She quit, she wor quit working at school when she started working at home, taking care of kids and me and a million things. So here, here's here's kind of the thing. It's like, this is who you're looking for. So to find people like this, you have to look through a lot of people. So the first thing is you don't get frustrated when you're going through the duds looking for the studs. Does that make sense? And the second thing is the faster you can filter and get to the studs, now you've got a bigger team you with me so um <clears throat> so so that's the whole concept is let's say your team let, let's say you're building a team right now you're not happy with the performance of the team you either change the team or you change the team that makes sense so you get new people or you get new people that makes sense Start to make so because you're the coach, you're the business owner, Tim. Mike, you're the business owner. I'd say you're the business owner. Let's say I'll try to do an analogy for you and see if this makes helps you get this. I'd say. Let's say you get a job, two million dollars a year to coach basketball at NC State. Well, 
I saw he looks like he's six foot seven when you're looking at him on this Zoom. But when he, you stand up beside him, he is about my height or maybe not quite. You with me? And I'm 5'11 and three quarters, almost six foot. You with me? All right. So what I would do, I would start looking for taller people than me to play basketball. And then um, I'm pretty quick, but I'm getting on up in age, and I ain't got that first step like I used to have, that rip step. I know how to do it, and in my mind, in my mind when I do a jump shot, I come off the ground about like that right there. But a lot of times my toes do this right here. They go, I'm trying to jump up to here, but my toes just, I give it the old, you with me? So you need to get some people that when they take a jump shot, they get off the ground. Does that make sense? You don't say, I'm the coach, therefore I need some people who ain't as good as me to be my players. If I'm the coach, I need people better than me to be my players. So I would give you, here's three people that I think are better than me on my team. <laughs> so how do you produce three people better than you, Tim? Mike, how do you produce three people better than you? Atsoi, how do you do it? Eric, Dapo, Harush. We still talking to Harush? Larouche, yeah. Is he looking on this? Larouche? Yes, he is on and we have a call today. Larouche, can you give me three people on your team better than you? That's the question. If you say, not right now, I don't have anybody on my team better than me. So I'm talking to this 25-year-old dude named Matt. Matt, uh, Matt, hopefully listening. Matt's a cool dude, man. Got him old beard, and he looks like he is just, I don't know, just re get ready to go play basketball. He's a business guy, okay? 25 years old. And I said, on your team, do you have any better, better than you? He said, well, I got several that think they are. I got two doctors that work for me and two attorneys that work for me. <laughs> I said, they do think they're smarter than you. He said, they do. He said, and I paid them more than they were making their other job. You see, he, he got a business. Does that make sense, Tim? Yes, it does. So the question is, how do we do that, right? What do we want? How do we get it? <clears throat> success coin. On one side of success is what do you want, and the other side of success is how to get it. Most people don't ever think about what they want. They can't decide. And then they never get to how to do it. But when you talk about building a business, if I'm building a basketball team, I'm going to go, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get me some tall dudes and some fast dudes so people can shoot and pass and dribble and uh, get into the university some way, somehow, through crook and nook. Somehow we got to get them in class, right? <laughs> so you prefer one that, that's going to get graduate or get in class, but they don't have to. Well, they have to, but you got to get them in somehow. You got to be friends with the admission board. I'd get to be real close to them. And I put feelers out there. Is anybody listen to me? You. I put feelers out there. If anybody knows anybody likes to play basketball that can graduate high school and come to my university that's tall and fast quick. That's how you get referrals. And if I'm getting more referrals than you are, it's probably because I'm planting more seeds. It's maybe because maybe it's because I know what I want and I know how to do it. So I almost sent y'all a text, but I decided to talk about this, Clay, instead of sending a text. You know I send a text. But I wanted to be more effective. Why is it that some coaches get into NCAA and some don't? How many universities try to get into NCAA tournament? How many? Who can Google it for me? Robbie will be the quickest to find out. 64 get in. Yeah? How many want in? 300 some. 300 some. Robbie's getting ready to tell us number. So why is it that some consistently get in and some don't? Is it the quality of the coach? 358. 358 schools want to get in, 64. Some are in it every year. I know one that didn't make it this year, and I was so happy they didn't. And I won that made it. That was a good year. When one makes it that you want to make it and one didn't make it, you didn't want to make it. But how, how do they do that? Is it good coaching? Huh? Skill or will. Skill or will. Is it good coaching? Is it good players? Is it good recruiting? Okay. You think it's recruiting. That's because you want a recruiter job. That's why you think it's recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> That's another point for you. 
I asked Robbie, I said, why do you think I hiring her? He said, she showed up on time for the interview. <laughs> and, same school. and he went to the same elementary school with her, which is a really good point. You can't argue. How are you going to argue Not with... Same time, same school. Exactly. Not the same time, the same school. Now, you, you're laughing, but here's what I'm saying. Do you understand that that's a technique? Went to the same, same grammar school together. So now, all of a sudden, they're connected. So now she's like most people once mm, engineer. A object in motion tends to stay in motion until something stops it. An uh, object not in motion seems to, tends to stay not in motion until a greater force moves it. So once you get a person connected, it's easier for them to stay connected than to disconnect. So the question is, how do you connect? How do you find out y'all was in the same school together? Asking questions. The quality of your life, the quality of your team, well, based on the quality of the questions asked. And I mean to pose a question, not hit you with something sharp when I say ask. You know what I'm saying? Pose a question, not get hit with something sharp. So the questions you ask determines the quality of your life, the quality of the money you find, the quality of the recruits that you get, and the quality of the connection. You make a strong connection, then it's hard for them to get unconnected. But if you don't make a connection, then let me see if I can explain it. You're not connected. <laughs> there's no chance of a future. There's no chance of a future business um, together if you're not connected with somebody. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. That's a lot right there, Tim. Good though. What do you think? If I talk to Jake or Diane and I said, what do you think Tim should get out of this talk? These are the people that hired him, work with him. Um, and same thing with, um, with Mike. What would Diane say? What do, what do you think you ought to get out of this the most, um, Otsoy? Like if, if Marvin was talking to you, and that's Marvin Osuna hired Marvin Otsoy. Tell Kim Clark I'm in a in a meeting, but I do need to talk to her about Medicare. Um, please. Okay. Let's go with Tim. What do you think you should get out of this? I mean, continually asking those deeper questions, even once you've established that that initial relationship with with a recruit, with somebody who's on your team, right? I mean, I've gotten better because you've you've taught us over and over asking those questions, that quality question. And I'll play the question game with with my agents, but continually building that relationship, making that effort over and over and over uh, is important because, it, and especially if they're not part of your warm market, so you don't have that depth of relationship, so. Okay, I like that a lot. Um, not getting weary and well-doing something you probably should be hearing, which is right out of the good book, right? What I say is don't get frustrated because you're going through a bunch of duds. What the Bible says is don't get weary and well-doing. So if you're doing the right thing, don't get tired. Keep doing it. Don't get frustrated because you, you're kissing a lot of frogs to find a prince. And then the faster you can kiss and the faster you can move, <laughs> the faster you can get to the next frog or prince. Does that make sense? How about that, Tim? You think that might be something on those two things might be on their list they would say Absolutely. to you? Yeah. Now, now, this is big, Tim. This is big, big, big. None of y'all were recruited off an ad in the coal market. <laughs> None of you. Not me, not them. You were. You were not. You were. You're coal. You answer an ad. You answer an ad. We knew each other. He works at uh, Sheldon Leadership, the Albright Leadership at NC State, and so we were connected like that, and then we start, talked and kind of become acquaintances and friends, and then I was like, hey, you know, you ought to think about doing this. You got kids coming, and, you know, so you with me? So so here's the tip, Tim. None of y'all came. Great, great people are going to come because of Matt, 
because of Alex and because, well, he's in war market already. But these two are cold. So they know people that are better than them. So if we can convince them to trust us that this is a good opportunity, they will refer us to a better team than they are. To get them to do that, what do I want? Depth. How do I get it? Ask questions. What do I want? Depth. Depth would be, I hire you, Alex, and then you hire somebody. Mm -hmm. So did you know you get paid to do that here? Anybody tell you that yet? Let me see something. Where's my rock? That's what you do when they don't try to get up people. They don't, when they don't try to depth, drive depth immediately, you punish. Huh? She's been here 20 minutes. I ain't known her but 15. <laughs> what do you want and how do you get it? Everybody makes mistakes. I get that all the time here. <laughs> But you, you understand the complaint and you understand the request is we dropped it. You're constantly thinking about it. Does that make sense, Tim? 100%. Yes. And, and you see how I'm like throwing a rock at Robbie. Because you won't, you want to be duplicated with anybody in staff. You want them to be thinking depth all the time or your agent. You want them to be thinking depth immediately. And then they give you that excuse they've only known them for 20 minutes or something. Or I've heard, I've only, they've only been in the business a week. I'm like, I met them six minutes ago and I've already asked them. And, you know, they're like, well, you can't ask everything. <laughs> well, we've got to prioritize, right? Because on how it says um, most valuable task. So what's the most valuable task? That's the question. Yeah. Check out my coin most valuable task on the house side. So of all the things you could ask, what's the most important? Well, you made a hell of a connection. Well, we got that done. Now we're starting to work the depth, which is who do you know? So what does she get paid if we hire somebody she knows? $250. So let's say you bring in a friend of yours and we hire him. You get paid $250. What do you think about that? High five, High five on that right there. Mm -hmm. You see how, Tim, does that make sense? Yes, it does. You guys are from the warm market. So I'm looking at that. So my the reason I hire off of ads is to get depth. I didn't hire Robbie Kraft. I hired a guy who hired a guy who hired a guy who referred Robbie Kraft. I don't think none of them work here anymore. But somebody did ask me about the, the, the coach. I fired them all. <laughs> I thought, I don't remember it like that. I remember we decided to quit paying them and they didn't come back. <laughs> The, I fired the coach, the soccer coach guy. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was asking me about him the other day. I was like, we ought to bring him back in here as a commission only. Yeah. Um, what do you think, Tim? You think that's an important point? Yeah, that's, that's huge. Yes. So here's what people tell me, Patrick. I'm doing everything Andy does. I go like, what, 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 what really? 100%. Huh. Huh. You follow what I'm saying? Huh. I'm saying it. I'm trying to say it without saying it so that y'all, it occurs to y'all so I don't have to occur it to you. Tim, part of your job when you're sitting there is trying to figure out what I'm trying to say to them, but don't guess. Just we'll talk about it later. Clay? Robbie? All right, Mike. What do you take? What do you think? Who would who? Would, what would they say to you? What would be the comments if it was from Diane or maybe Brandon Manley talking about you, saying, "Here's what Mike needs to do differently, or really needs to think about finding the right ones to give the time to, the ones that deserve it, and working with them and getting those deeper connections and asking the right questions to get that stronger connection to build through that depth." Sometimes, Mike, when you talk to somebody, you think they're great and you think you said all the things and then they don't get in. Doesn't Does that annoy you a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you like to talk about it? Like, tell me about one? Because I want to tell you about a couple of mine. I just. 
Have you had any recently? Yeah, I've got a few that I'm trying to think of uh, the most recent one. I'll give you an example. Yeah, I had um, this young young lady here in Chicago responded to an ad. Um, Zip Recruiter uh, just finished college and looking for opportunities and didn't didn't see this as the career path that she wanted to go. And it was just like her stepping into it. Yeah. She had a great personality. I thought she would come in and be able to kill it. And it was just like she needed the time to talk to her family about it and came back and just wasn't for her, she said. So I was kind of frustrated because I was like, she could be really good at this because she can come into this, learn right off the bat, get into this industry and just start building it. So I wish I would have gotten into this industry when I was, you know, that young and being able to build up that book of business and the agency. So it was a little frustrating seeing that happen. I was a party Saturday night in Jacksonville and guy made a heck of a old fashioned and I complimented him on that. And I said, what else do you do besides work here? And he said, well, I'm looking for a job. I just graduated from FSU in business. I said, well, we need to talk. I hit him with dial your number. So he dialed his number, text me, got a text relationship going on. The other guy looks at, I look at him, I go, how about you? He said, I'm a computer science degree. I've graduated during COVID, can't find a job. I'm doing this and Uber and everything else, trying to find a job. And I said, okay, I'll talk to you too. <laughs> so he gives me his number and I start talking to these dudes. And the computer science guy, like his granddad's from some other country. So he's like, like second generation or whatever you call it. And he's from a country that believes in self-employment. And I'm talking to him about that thinking I've made an unbelievable connection. And um, did, did y'all ever talk to him? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Fahad. Yeah. And um, how did that go? Uh, the phone conversation went great. And... Phone conversation went great, but then he blocked me, so you can't even accept messages. Yeah. And I thought the conversation went great. He texted me that he decided to go on with his career, which he does not have one. He can't find a job in computer science. So nobody will hire him. Don't tip. Oh, I'm I'm livid. I got a computer science guy, smart as everything, good looking, young, knows how to make an old fashioned. You know, <laughs> these guys were, you know, I give them, you know, throw down a hundred dollar bill tip, and them boys would follow me around and get me peanuts, anything I want. Everybody thought it was, I was getting married or something, you know. They just they were treating me good, you know. And then the other guy, I told him, I said, Fahad flaked. I thought that was a pretty good rhyme. For hard flaked on me. You a flake on me too? And he won't respond back. And and everybody, I mean, Big Mike was at the at the wedding and, and all kinds of people making money. Like they and it was at a country club. Stupid nice wedding. Clearly we're not bums, right? Is that what you're talking about, Mike? That kind of frustration you get sometimes? Yeah, absolutely. And I I know I've gotten it plenty of times. You know, I've Pretty recent one example, too, is uh, an Uber driver I had, real sharp guy, talking about the money he's making doing Uber and the teams he's built with his cologne perfume company he's had in the past, grabbed his number. We were chatting, had a, had a great conversation. And then after that, I was trying to get him back on the phone and haven't been able to. Yeah. So That's here's it. the question. <clears throat> Are you, are you trying to get them in and bring them to me or bring them to Diane or bring them to a convention? Yeah, events. Events are the, usually the number one thing I'm trying to do. I look on thealliance.events.com. Kind of connect. Like every, every time I'm doing the recruiting, I got recruiting calls. Thealliance.events.com is open while I'm talking to them because when I figure out whatever city they're in, I go to Google Maps and I'm Googling it and I'm trying to find the closest hotspot training whatever that's happening and i'm finding the travel time and i'm telling them hey this is perfect timing for you cannot wait for you to meet you know gina hawks and then i'm talking about that event and i'm telling them hey this is the first step into it it's perfect to get introduced to this business so here's what here's what losers say it's not a competition 
You know why they don't want it to be a competition? Because they're losing. <laughs> they want a participation coffee. Trophy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True that. Losers say, it's not a competition, Andy. Everybody's just trying to compete. I got this one guy here who says, I'm just trying to compete against myself, not anyone else. It's only me am I trying to compete against. And I go, that's why you're doing terrible, bro. <laughs> you actually are beat. You're beating someone that's not that good. We try to beat somebody that's good. But he's a self-love sort of guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's like, it's a competition. If Ott's always getting two a week and they're quality and you're getting none and you're beating your old score, which was none, or you get one, why don't you look at Ott's old? Does that make any sense? You know why people, well, there's a lot of reasons we don't. So here's the question. If these three were competing, not me, I want to be in the competition. Who's getting so many sharp people to say no to them? The most. You hear me, Patrick? Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. How come, how many failures have I had this week with sharp people that I've talked to? And I think I got them and they ought to do it. And I think I made a connection. You know, you're talking failures or successes? Failures. So my question would be is Otsoy, Tim, and Mike, which one do you think is failing the most? at bringing super, super, super sharp people on. Like you're talking to them, and you got them right there, and then you fail. Who's failing the most is probably got the sharpest team. You understand why that works? Why do I say it like that, uh, Mike Morisi? The most failures is the one that wins the most. Because you got to get through the the no's to get the yeses you're going to talk i mean it's the same thing in the sales aspect you know you you go and knock on a lot of doors you go and set up your appointments you know every time you you have a dial session you're not you're not batting a thousand you're not setting 10 out of 10 on the phone you know you're going to always have the people that are going to hang up on you cuss you out and it's you know it's the same thing on the recruiting there's always going to be the ones that are going to say no to you but you know, every, um, I heard this a long time ago, um, one of my first sales jobs, every strike, you're one swing closer to a home run. So when you're getting those no's, it sucks and you hate it, but it's, it's part of it to kind of find the ones that are, are that gold that you're mining for. But, um, yeah, I guess it's just the persistence of keep on keeping on so you can, get sharper at your skill and figure out those reasons why some people are just doing no and getting better. If you, if you don't have sharp people to come to the table, you don't meet them through running an ad or talking to people. Okay. If you're not talking to people that are sharp, then you're not going to ever find any sharp. But if you're talking to sharp people, you're going to have failures. So like Scott Kuster is one of the very successful people on our team. This guy went to NC State, played football, was dominant force on the offensive line, protected Phillip Rivers' butt, went on to play for the Cincinnati Bengals for seven years, made crazy money. Um, he is um, He graduated, and like every other football player, he's looking around, what do I do now? And um, I am on – everybody that I know about referring people. And one of the guys always asked me to write a check for a million dollars or 500,000 or a hundred thousand. And I said, you need to start giving me referrals if you want me to keep writing your checks. And I'm not kidding. So he, his name is Ben Broussard, who's president of the Booster Club at NC State. He referred me to Scott Cooster. He said, this guy might be a good one. And he is, and he's big, 6'6", 330, imposing figure. He's a great guy. But the president of Bush referred him to me because I told him referrals, right? Now, he gave me another girl that was fantastic personality, way better sales. The problem is a lot of times way better sales, also way better. Great, great. You with me? So she <laughs> actually she went to a piece of PNC company after we got her license and everything. I think she goes, she's going to pay her salary, and she was happier about that. And I was like, shoot. See, I got one for two, but I got two. 
Um, former head of basketball NC State is Coach Godfrey, and I used to fly him around on my jet. And um, I'm always talking about how successful young people are. He said, hey, I got an idea. Why don't you talk to my son, Dylan? I said, what's he doing now? He said, the kid's bright. He's working at a high-end country club, uh, waiting on tables, learning a lot, and just super kid. Me and him were talking. I talked to him yesterday. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? Who's failing the most? Who, so I'm, I pull up their reports and look at their group, and I look at the size of their group and the quality of their group, and I'll tell you who's failing the most. Y'all, y'all buy that? Mm-hmm. But here's the thing: it's hard to stay motivated when you're getting no's. That's why I love that that old show. Y'all tell me the name of it. Where Urkel is trying to date that girl. Mm-hmm. Family Matters, and he's constantly so optimistic that he's got a shot. If she says, I wouldn't date you for the last person on earth, he's like, so you're saying I got a shot. <laughs> um, give me your failures at least. Tell me about your failures, and I'll tell you about your successes. I'd say if Marvin, Robbie Kraft, your wife, talking to you and say, Marvin, you need to pay attention to this part of it. What part would they be talking about that you need to pay attention to? How to be consistent into the business, how to get more people around us, and how to recruit orders. So remember Martin Osuna saying all the time, he is the most uh, patient person in the world. So just let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. So he was coaching to me until I get it. So years later and i don't want people just to wait years just sooner as soon as possible one simple word that he says you now once you got it now looking for duplicate yourself or duplicate the team and i think in the basketball analogy like michael jordan is failing failing the winning shot and that's why he succeed you know I don't know, seven rings, something like that. Wow. And looking at the basketball finals, for example, so no one can win a championship. It's the team. So we are stronger when we are together. So if we sharp our team, if we're looking for duplicate the winning people, so our team will be better. I heard that your wife wants you to be more consistent and get more sharp people sooner. <laughs> That's right. So we want to build more people with us for the next trip in the, in, in the Alliance, for example. Just getting more around us, getting more people to do this business and help families around us. So talking, as you said, with sharp people, uh, as a PNC person, I'm looking for people like me and let them know that we have fortune in our, you know, book of business, they say, and we just need to talk to them. We need to talk to people about how to do this business, how blessed we are if we, you know, create the mindset to guide our agency, to get people around our team. So. That's why she's telling me all the time, so grab more people like you and create a team, a bigger team, a bigger team every year. Now, it's nice. Yeah. My boy, Brian, has had a lot of failures. A lot of failures. Michael Jordan's had a lot of failures. The one thing you know when you meet a winner, wealthy, big-time business, they've had a lot of failures. You, like, my magic goes wild when I meet somebody, like this 25-year-old kid I'm talking about that's got two doctors and two attorneys working for him, got 13 employees, 25 years old. He's failed like nobody's business, but people don't see that. They see a kid who's lucky in business. You don't know what he's been through. My first thing goes to appreciation for what they've been through. My thing goes to appreciation to what Tim's been through, what what Otso has been through with um with his failed um, – failed political campaign 
the money he lost, the embarrassment, the attacks. It was ugly, Aunt Zoe. I appreciate that. So you find a person who's come out the other end. And with how many, I mean, you think about how many times you got you got spikes on your face, Mike Maurice. <laughs> Ball hits you in the head. I'm about heck gonna miss that one. It's <laughs> it's happened. All right, so here's 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 the big here we go. The next next big this is a big tip. The questioning game works like this, Zach. I ask you a question. It's a very simple game, but it's it's like opening up a safe. You got to listen real close to get it. I ask you a question, but you don't ask a question. You ask me a question. And the question you ask me can't be similar to the question that I ask you. But it's, it's, a, but it's very difficult with an experienced person to win this game because they'll ask you a question and you'll answer it, which is incorrect. You're supposed to ask a question, not answer it. I can ask you anything I want to. I can try to embarrass you. I could ask you Why what. Do you want to embarrass you? Um, well, if I was trying to win the game, that's why I would be doing it. Do you it. think you have a chance to win the game? I'm pretty sure I would crush you immediately. The what you, game are we talking? The questioning <laughs> game. What's the question you What are the rules? Works like this. <laughs> when I ask you a question, your job is to ask me a question back, but it can't be like the question I ask you. Let me even give you an example so you don't feel like you're cheated. I say, when's the last time you had a clean shaven face? Because it looks like you've been wearing this two or three years. And you come back, you look like yours is shaved close. When did you last shave? And I go like, you see how you got jacked up? Or you say, well, I bet you never had your hair head shaved like mine. I go, bro, that's real close to the question I ask you. You see what I'm saying? Huh? The game was not started. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you when the game has started. When I tell you the game started, that's when you will get your butt spanked. Let's, let's say we're playing around shooting basketball and you're just putting it in the basket, putting it in the basket, putting it in the basket. And you go, you didn't even know we was playing it. It's because the game ain't started. I saw you making a fool with shooting like crazy. All right, but you see what I'm saying? Okay, you ready? So you think you got the rules. With the game's not started yet, do you think you have the rules? You do. So, Matt, same, same. you making money. You're really a good – how much do you have under management, AUM? Well, right now, I have a branch. Um, you have a team? Yes. So, it's not just you. It's a team. Right. So, you don't personally bring money in. Right. Okay. I coach and <clears throat> Okay. Have you ever brought money in? Okay, so if you've ever brought money in, you're really good at this game, and you don't even know it. But when I put it in this context, it's much more challenging. But when you're asking clients, they don't even know it's a game, but you win. Like, he thought he was winning with me because, like, I ain't playing yet. What if you're playing with a person that don't even know it's a game? You should win every time. Okay, so this is how Robbie connected you. He asked questions, and you answered the questions, right? He was just trying to make a connection. All right. Now, most of the time when people play this game, they ask things like, what color do you like? Do you have a car? And I'm like, bro, you're not making a connection. When you make a connection, it jacks up their head and they fail. So that's how you win in this game is by making a connection. Because if you make a connection, people can't think straight. Does it kind of make sense? So like, for example, um, do you still have those leads? Do you still have the leads? So... So if I've got this person's information, Matt, I can say, um, Catherine, let me make sure I got this correct. You're at 1612 St. Mary's Road. Is that right? She can say, yeah. Well, see, now you're in her head. And then you go, um, now, Hillsboro. That's Hillsboro. That's like Chapel Hill, like right outside of Hillsboro. Is that right? Now she's thinking about where she lives, and, and she thinks you've got a computer screen with a whole life story in front of her. You with me? Even though all you got is this. Well, now you're in charge of everything because you're inside her head. And it's so easy to do. So when you get one of, when a recruit sends in a resume, you should be able to ask them questions and get inside their head and control the, the game. Now, boys and girls, y'all with me, Tim? So the quality of the question determines the quality of the, the connection. And it also, so, so, <clears throat> so like, you ready? 
Can can y'all hear what he's saying? Where's a mic? Uh, all right, here's a mic. So test it and see if. Can you hear me? Can y'all hear him? I tell you what. Yeah, come come right here. Come right here. <clears throat> MJ. So you named your kid after MJ. Michael Jordan. <laughs> what was this? What's Mike, your kid's name? Mike Jr. Yeah, Mike, Mike Jr. Jr. Mike Jr. MJ. All yeah, right. Air Jordans, you got it all. So here's what. When I put this down, that's when the game begins. Now, who's it's not, it's not beginning, so I'm not saying that. So you want to ask the first question, you want me. How you want it to go? I'll start. So when I put this down, any question I ask, you're 100% good to go, right? Okay. All right. Now, the tendency is going to be to ask non-invasive questions when you're doing an interview with a person because you don't want to invade because you don't want them to hang up on you. So you gradually turn up the, the heat. So that's what I'm going to do to him. I'm going to gradually turn up the heat. I'm going to give him, I'm going to let him, I might mess him up bad quickly, but my, ch my intention is to get inside his head. And you try to get inside my head. Okay. All right. Here we go. Are you ready? Are we certain? See how closely the question he asked me was exactly like the question I asked? Try not to ask the same question that I just asked. <laughs> this is a, we're starting again. So this is a very difficult game, isn't it? Very. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying, right? Yeah. I was doing good before the He was doing great when he was shooting the basketball like crazy when I wasn't even playing the game, but when that whistle blew, I'll probably got serious. You see the feeling that it no, I'm not playing. You see the feeling that it creates inside your head. So like when I was talking to you. Now, don't get me wrong. I get inside your head. I get you thinking, and you like what I, what we do, right? Mm -hmm. But immediately, you've seen me connect you with Jessica and, and, and other people as fast as possible, right? Because they're closer to your age than I am, mm -hmm. and it's going to be easier for them to connect. You tracking on this? All right. So... <laughs> So I, I, I really was giving him easy questions. It gets way more difficult. Like, for example, this is an example of if we kept playing and got deeper. Mm -hmm. um, I would say to you now, I know y'all want to have kids. Are y'all actively trying? Yeah. You, so you see how you said yes so quick? Yeah. That'd mess oh, yeah. you up, wouldn't it? Yeah. We asked that question. I was riding down the road after shooting iguanas asking you this question, mm -hmm. by the way. Yes. True that? True. You heard me asking him. That's Zach, the NC State guy. He was focused. He was, but you, you with me? Like, so I'm asking these questions, and so I get him thinking about his kids. I get him thinking about their future. Would you be open to doing something outside of the business? You understand, Tim? Yes, absolutely. Now, now, let me explain to you. I did this with the computer science guy, too, but it didn't work. Does that make sense? Like I'm telling y'all, most people don't try this with anybody. I don't know why. Maybe it's because they're fearing failure. Maybe because they don't want to be the one that loses the game. Does it make sense? So you, the question, so the questioning game, you don't even know there's playing a game when I'm riding down the road. It's easy. So when you're talking to a person about their money, you can't be too invasive, but you turn up the heat as the questions go. Does that make sense? Um, is this working out, Soy? 100%. But what if you beat somebody who don't, like you're, you're doing a questioning game. Like what if you're just questioning a game when somebody's got no money and you're a money getter, like an AUM guy? That don't make no sense, does it? So the quicker you can find out they got no money, then you're immediately going to referrals. And then when they got no referrals, we're moving on to the next dud. So it's an interview process 
not a recruiting process in the beginning. Tim, Mike, Otsoy, what do you think about that, Otsoy? Interviewing process. Learning, you know, quality questions to ask and looking for people, like you said, sharp people. Listen to this interviewing. So what you do in the military? I'm like, I'm interviewing. Go ahead, answer your question. What'd you do in the military? Jumped on, Mike a, perfectly, jumped on a perfectly good helicopter. Okay. So there's your helicopter flyer. Yeah. There's your helicopter jumper. So um, Army, Tim? Yes. Army. Okay. So I know he'll jump out of helicopters. And what's your degree? Uh, education and coaching, master's. Okay. So I know he's got a master's degree. So should I focus on him? Heck yeah. Now here's what people say. But Andy, you say anybody could do this. You tell us that the dumbest, well, maybe y'all haven't heard my new pitch. The dumbest are not as likely to do it as the smartest. The bravest are more likely to do it than the scaredy cats. The ambitious are going to do it a whole lot more. Those with a reason, like children coming on and mommy wants to stay home. Those with a reason are more likely to do it. So then what happens is there's other people that I'm, I'm passing quickly because I'm going like, hey, Patrick, talk to this guy. Hey, talk to this. You know, I'm just, I'm, I ain't got time to spend on them, right? But you will see me come back to the ones that I think are the most intelligent and sharpest of all the 50 failures that I have going on right now. And occasionally I will, I will pick a, um, you call them an underdog. Pick an underdog, trying to help them, you know, like lost puppy, like, like some girls are always getting a guy that needs to be turned around and saved, you know, they're just great at getting these puppies, you know, and you're like, you know, if you got one that didn't need to be saved, you could work on something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like this is kind of going to get like drudgery eventually because you're not talking to the right quality of person. Mike. Quality of awesome. questions. Say again. No, I said I said that's awesome. Um, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. What are some of the questions to ask the filter quicker with people? What are some of those good questions? See, the crazy thing is, um, all right, great question. Let's talk about let's talk about what we're looking for. Okay, what are we looking for, Mike? What's something that I would like? You say, hey, Andy, I got a guy. And you say this, and I go, oh, man, I want to talk to him. What, what might be one of those top things that I want to hear? I would say probably someone that is a hustler might have mm -hmm. a few things going. Like they, they're willing to invest. They have a entrepreneur, like an entrepreneur spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So far, I'm not really. interested in your guy. Give me a shot, Tim. What, what can you tell me to get me interested? Somebody who believes in a higher power. Somebody I know you like military. Um, what about you know, military? You got you got you you're on the tip of the iceberg. What about military? What do I like about military? You like their commitment. So tell me something about this guy. So this guy, um, I mean, special operations, doing something special, something hard, something that stands out, something that's different. That's yeah. Done, done it. A lot of what you're talking about, Mike, in my mind is hopefulness. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, hey, my day said wish in hand, one, hand, one hand, do something else in the other hand, see which hand fills up first. And the wishing don't fill up like the other thing he said to do in a hand. <laughs> you with me, Tim? I mean, Mike? Yep. Give me, I'd say, tell me, I got a guy, Andy, and this is the reason you should talk to him. Give me a good reason. Because he wants to achieve goals. He wants to achieve something. <laughs> Don't care. Tell me something I care about. Family. Wait. He has achieved something. Ah, like what? He has achieved something. All this hope stuff. All this wishing and wanting and trying. And he, he, he. What's he ever done in his life? Nothing. What's he apt to do next? Same thing. 
Andy, I thought you said anybody could do this. They can. I'm not talking to him. All he is is a dreamer. I don't need a dreamer. I need a dunner. Done, done. Done jumped out of helicopter. Done learned how to fly a helicopter. Done flew out and shot at people. They'd be shooting back. Come back alive. Shows he's lucky. Fortunate. Blessed. God's protecting him. I don't know. But I want him on my team when the war breaks out. I don't want somebody that abstained from the army. I want somebody that went and killed some. You know, somebody went out there and attacked. Does that make sense? What else would be a good thing? I, yeah, I did it with all three of y'all. What do I like about all three of y'all? Y'all are what? The evidence of high achievement. Yeah, give me the evidence of yours. The, the master's degree, the deployments, stuff, all that. I'd say he's been deployed. He got a master's degree. I like him. How old are you? 30. He's 30 years old. You see, he's younger than I am. I don't need people older than me. I don't need anybody close to my age. Does that make sense? You see what I'm saying, Mike? I'm not yep. interviewing looking for hope. I'm not looking yep. for a guy who's looking for a break. I'm looking for a guy who makes breaks. Got a job. Got money. Mm -hmm. Wife's got a job. Got a job. Wife's got a job. This <laughs> big time university. It's NC State, baby. That's the other thing. I'm like, it's NC State. I like NC State. I hired Robbie Kraft first day because he went to NC State. Didn't even ask him what his degree was or nothing. Didn't tell him. He wanted to know what job. I said, I don't know. Come Monday, we'll figure that out. <laughs> Ma'am called me today. Wanted to use my auditorium. I don't like renting my auditorium all out. I don't like giving discounts. I don't even like renting it. He said, my son just graduated from NC State, and this one's going to NC State. I said, I call it an emergency meeting. We're going, he's, going to go, he's, going to do a, he's going to do a meeting here. At, you know, went to NC State. He graduated from NC State and going to NC State. It means he got accepted in NC State. You know how hard it is to get accepted in NC State? You don't know nobody? <laughs> it's hard. You see what I'm saying, Mike? Does this make sense? Now do you know the questions I'm asking, Mike? Yeah, yeah, you're looking for those achievements, what commitments they've done, what what have they accomplished, not what they're saying they're going to accomplish. It's what they've done. So, see, here's the here's the thing. People get offended this talk a lot of times, Matt, because they quit college and they think I'm talking about them. I'm not talking about them. I'm talk. It'd be like telling me I'm not that good at basketball. Hey, idiot! I'm I'm recruiting people to play basketball. I'm not the player. I'm the coach. Why would I be offended if somebody tells me I can't jump? You can't make it on a basketball team, Andy. I'm not trying to be the basketball team. I'm trying to build a basketball team. So if you're not that good because you failed, you flunked, this happened, this, your wife is one disaster after another, try to recruit somebody not like you. Does that make sense? You see what I'm saying? So then I get people with master's degree deployed active duty, came from another country, ran for governor in another country, and then they give me this guy who can't get a job in the United States of America when you got help wanted signs every time you turn around. People can't, I can't get nobody, I can't get no job. And I go like, well, these people can't hire, everybody I know can't hire people. Like we're running interview, we're running ads to hire people everywhere right now. In Florida, I'm talking salaried, hourly jobs, not just commission jobs, and people are not answering them. And you're bringing me to a guy that can't get a job in America? <laughs> like, go into any restaurant and say, hey, I want to tote that, them dishes back to the back for you. They'll be like, let me get you a bucket, boy. We'll pay you plus tips. We'll split tips with you in a night. Cash money. Can't get a job. You Uber. I don't even know how to sign up. You sign up on this thing. People start calling you. And you, you go out there and pick them up. Put them in your nasty car, take them to their nasty destination. You get paid beautiful cash, deposited directly in your account. Man ain't got a job, ain't got no money to pay for his license fee. He can't pay $200 to get his insurance license. You think he's going to get out here and build something big? Hey, you're discriminating against people that are unfortunate. Hire them all. I just ain't talking to them. You know why? I'm trying to win a basketball team. I'm trying to win. Coach Dave Dorn, football coach, he got big boys coming in this year. Fast boys, tall boys. He wants tall receivers. Fast and tall. That's what he looks for in receivers. Fast and tall. He don't even care if they play football for it, just if they fast or tall. Oh, here's the thing. I got this kid. He wants to go to the NC State. I think you need to let the coach know. 
What are you talking about? Nobody cares what he wants to do. That's a want, a hopeful wish. How tall is he? How big is he? What's his grades in class? What does daddy do for a living? Wait a minute. You care what his daddy do? Coach Dave Dorn cares what the kid's dad does for a living. What if his dad's successful? What if his dad was a general and he's a major? What if his dad played at South Carolina and won a national championship and his kid wants to come to NC State? And he's six foot six. You see the odds? Now you want this kid because this kid knows it can be done. Dad's self-employed. You with me? You say, now my dad, see, my dad, I wish I come from a self-employed rich dude. But I don't. My dad's a mailman. But I tell you this about him. He's the hardest working man I ever met in my life. I think I compete with him, and I think um, I think Brian Adams competes with my dad on how hard we work. He's in St. Croix texting like crazy with me. My wife's like, leave him alone. He's in St. Croix with his family. I said, he's having fun. He's texting with me. Do you understand what he's working? Is this affecting you guys at all on going, who you're looking for? Now, you say, what about all my people that don't fit that description? They're great people. Hopefully they're on here, and they will recruit people better than they are. This makes sense. So you're looking for, where'd you say you, what university you went to? University of Minnesota. University of Minnesota. Um, that's a big school. What's the mascot? Gopher. And, and they, um, they're in the tournaments a lot. Yes. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Okay. So think about you graduate from. Um, I don't want to put down a university, but one of these small universities that really care about the people and they help them learn and they just really, you know, it's higher, low student to teacher ratio, 10 kids because they want to get a quality education versus a school like University of Minnesota where your chemistry 101 or math 101, there's 350 people in there. You see the difference? Okay, which kid do you want to hire? The one that went and they trained him and they spent a lot of time with him and he graduated this university and it's a great university versus the one that was a number. Which kid do you want to hire? Taking the number because... That, you taking the numbers? Yeah. Because why? They still succeeded. They still went through it all, but they weren't put in the prime position the other one was. That gives me cold chills that he got that right. Lots of people say, I want this guy because he's smarter and they spent time with him and educated him. How's he going to fail? It's easier to fail at Minnesota and NC State than it is that university. Yeah. You go up in there. Did I tell you about what happened with Chemistry 101? 350 people, auditorium style. And, um, you know, we, we're trying to get by the best we can. You know, mm -hmm. and they can't tell what's going on. I go down there and I just get a couple of When you finish your test, just leave your test laid on the teacher's desk. I just got a couple of them right here. I just got the test. It's already finished. And I'm just filling mine out. Stacked up tests everywhere. The teacher said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to pass this daggum test. It's hard as hell. You wrote, a, you wrote a fine test. She said, are you just copying stuff? I said, no, I'm just checking my answers and just guessing I did them. Hold on a second. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this thing done, you know. And she said, you can't do that. I'm going to fail you. I said, you don't even know who I am. She said, I don't know who you are. I said, see you. <laughs> See, it takes innovation. Yeah. You gotta want it. You gotta want it, baby. And then here's another thing. Chemistry, the second one, 102 or 201. They start with two. I said, I can't pass it. I told my friend Hank Thiel. I said, Hank, what are we gonna do? Because Hank dumb too. <laughs> I mean, he's big time. I think he's, I can't remember who he's with. He's big time now. Big job. Multiple six figures. Live right across, uh, uh, right across the railroad. Our good friends, Hank. He said, I heard that we could take this same class at Elon University, and it's one of those PACE things. You were, I, forget, I don't know what that stands for, but you work on, you, you can work together to get through it. He said, What we need to do is take it this summer. It's that one course, and me and you do it together, and we'll get through it, and we'll get through 201. I said, All right, let's do it. So we're figuring this thing out. So we get signed up. We take that cast and pass it. Turn it into NC State. I go, yep, you're done. You're not taking more chemistry. <laughs> but I got my degree from NC State because it's a very difficult school to graduate from. But I got my chemistry 201 or whatever you call it. And you see what I'm saying? 
So I interviewed Clay. How many years ago I interviewed Clay? <clears throat> hey, come, just come up here. So, so we're interviewing. So here's what I'm telling you is the coaches, when they find the kid who's tall and big, they go back and interview. They ask, hey, Andy, can I use your jet? I got, I got this kid's plan. I go, can I ride with you? He said, yeah, we're just going to ride down to Charlotte. We go down to Charlotte, walk in there, you know, I'm with Coach Keats, you know, and he's looking around, and he said, that's the one we want right there. So what does he do? He focuses on that's the one we want right there. And then, that's his mom and daddy up there. That's his mom over there. That's his daddy over there. You see what I'm saying? I'm not kidding you. It's awesome. I said, that kid looks good. He said, I look the way he stands. I don't like the way he stands. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I don't like his posture. He looks like he missed that shot, and then he pouts a little bit. I ain't listening to all that. He's trying to get the best for Tim. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So he focuses on the one. Hey, why do you think y'all on here? I look down my list of the next time I do a leadership, and y'all were on that list. And then I looked on that. I'll show you the list right here. The list right there. CFG cap. There's, there's the ones that are on the leadership, and there's a new list. And Jay Krause is on the list. Jerry Burbage is on it. Nick Greco, uh, Marvin Otsoy, Eric Fuller, Michael Williams, Joe Two, Hartlib, Schultz, Maurice, Tim Long, Brant Swindell, Alan, Andy B. I don't know how you say Andy B's name, but Bushna Chalet, and Aaron Levi and Vinny Napoli. You know, they're on my list. That's my list. There's my boys, Terry Edwards, Jason. They're not coming to the leadership, but if I do another leadership, I got to get, I got 20 more people. I got 12 coming to this one. I got 20 more that I want. Some of them were invited. Some of these were invited, but they couldn't come because they were out of commitment. So I got my list of boys, men. How about girls? I got girls on there, but you understand what I'm saying is it's kind of hard to do when you have 12 people in a cabin. You usually get, you know, get my wife to take 12 girls. I'm going to take 12 guys. You with me? You see what I'm saying? So I'm, is this, I'd say, you need to tell me somebody on your team that's better than Tim Long, better than Mike Morisi, and I take them instead of, Tim and Mike. But until you find somebody better, how am I going to find somebody better? So well, I'm going to have a list and I invite you on here because those are the kind of people. I interviewed Clay. Tell him the top three things that probably stood out in my mind when I interviewed you. How many years ago? Eight years ago. What's some top things that, that stood out when I interviewed you? Graduated University of Colorado biology degree. Dad. Attorney owns his own law firm in Boulder, Colorado, and um, probably Eagle Scout, Boy Scout background. That's right. So I said, Robbie, talk to this guy. Lisa, talk to this guy. Mary, talk to this guy. Spend some time with him. Tell him how good, how fun it is. You with me? So you can't. If I tell Robbie to talk to every dimwit, ding dong person, Robbie can't run his job. But if I tell him to select people, he going does that make sense, Tim? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Bring every fun. person to me. I got a guy named Mike. I want to say something to Mike. It's interviewing. And he's bringing everybody to me, and I love him from doing that. What I would like for him to do is bring me his best because I'm getting numb to the numbers. You with me? Anthony, this guy's great. And then I'm like, oh, they ain't responding to text. He's in a group text, and he's not responding. So then I get numb, and then I'm not listening to anything because I'm going like, give me some, does this make sense, Maritza? Maritza, am I saying it right? Um, comments, Tim? I think it's helpful. It help it's realigning some thoughts and because it's easy to start thinking a lot of different ways and uh, just refocusing. So thank you. I told you you're going to do better. <clears throat> absolutely absolutely 100 percent. because just watching the training and you know all the notes here is ready to go and drop so you give me 10 great players and two of them are going to be better than everybody else one of them's going to be better than everybody else and the third one's going to be third best how you know that i've been studying this for a long time third best is usually third best but if you give me 10 bad players one of them's going to be better than the other ones but he still ain't in the good players. So it's a different group of players. There's 10 bad players. So you give me 10 good players, then I'm going to pick the best. You give me 10 bad players, I'm going to pick the best. But really what I want to do is just kind of skip it and move on. I'll be nice. It's everything. They're invited. Everybody's invited. 
So who are you trying to get to the convention in Miami that ought soy? Your best. What about the ones that are not that good? They really need to go. But you want your best there and you're not best? Yeah, I want everybody there. Because the not best can bring on somebody better than them. They can build a team of 10 people better than them. I'm trying to get people better than me. Younger, smarter, quicker. Their daddy was smarter. They got a better degree. They went to a better university. They're a biology degree. A PhD, computer science. I love those guys. Um, active duty military. Rank. What, what, what was your title, Tim? Chief military. Warrant Officer. Chief Warrant Officer 4. Chief Warrant Officer 4. That's big. That's not E2. I don't even know what E2 stands for. I just know I've met some. No offense to the E2ers. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? So, so you're interviewing while you're selling them, but you're going to sell harder and work harder with the ones that got further on in the interview. And then you got to plan a lot of ads. I mean, I'm still working through this thing with my son because he's getting resumes like crazy. I'm like, son, if you looked at the resumes, you'd be better off talking to the people that are happy to talk to you. Maybe you, so I don't know, we got to get through, sort through that, Debbie. Like I want him to talk to the best, not everybody or who responds. I know they want to and they're entrepreneurial and they care and blah, 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 but I want to know who looks good on a white sheet of paper. That makes sense. All right, guys. Um, hope this is helpful. Um, I hope I got through some people sitting in this room on trying and the quality of people. And the other reason I had you three on here, because I think when I talk, I think you're the kind that can hear it and execute on it better than some of the other people that I could have had on here. There might, I might have missed somebody that's better. But I want him to say, Andy, you should have got me on there. I'm better. Marcus Richards is on here. Um, Jeff Schultz is on here. Brant Swindale is on here. I think I said it. Eric Belair, Jay Krause, your upline, and Terry Edwards, and Jason Mathis. And then, you know, and there's those, those are guys because I'm looking at a leadership that would do some shooting and stuff. And then I always get girls, going, I want to shoot. I go, okay, that's different. We'll do, we do a different time. All right, guys, hope this is helpful. Let's kick some butt. Spend money on ads, uh, President's Club. You get those ads, and then as soon as you recruit people, you get that connection, and you go in in depth. And it's like I'm a broken record, ain't it? It's because that's what I do. All right, night-night. Love y'all. Thanks. Let's go kill this thing. Get one more to Miami.